Yes, welcome back to the channel and to a different video as we look back at our very first video or vlog from 2019 when we first started. Can you believe we've been doing this for five years? Because I certainly can't and I remember all those years ago when Theo wanted to actually do something on YouTube, um, we opted to try something like an amusement park. In this case, it was Southport Pleasureland, which you'll get to see bits back, or in fact, we'll see the whole vlog back with me looking at it and sort of comparing how we used to do it then to how we used to do it now. You'll notice the quality is slightly different, if not very different. The way I edit is totally different. And it'll be quite a, a, an eye-opener to uh, a lot of people who've probably not even seen that vlog before. Um, it's probably worth watching it just to sort of see and compare how we are. I don't look any different, Megan doesn't look any different, but Theo certainly does and I think that's sort of like the highlight of this vlog and looking back from five years ago, um, it's something I, I really wanted to sort of showcase and uh, explore with you guys just to see how different we are. But yeah, five years, it's been a... Uh, should we say a roller coaster of a journey? Uh, there's definitely been some ups, certainly been some downs, but above all, we're still going and still going strong. And again, you know, I could say every year this year is going to be a blinder. We've already opened the year up um, going to France this year, so we're already sort of broadening the horizons, so to speak, uh, already. And uh, yeah, I think f f this year certainly and beyond, uh, we've got some more interesting vlogs coming up but of course make sure you are staying tuned for that but for this time we're going to be looking back at our very ever first vlog on the channel and yes like i said before it is at southport pleasure land it is an amusement park uh, you'll see some of the rides there that you'll be like oh my god i didn't know that was there or wow do you remember that ride because some of the rides that are there then aren't no longer here. And the vlog lasted about eight and a half minutes, which is quite interesting because vlogs are never that short anymore. In fact, obviously this one would be much longer than that. And um, yeah, it would be interesting to watch it back. I've not really watched it back. I saw that, I just watched it back briefly uh, at the start and I was like, oh my God. So I, I haven't seen towards the end in so long. Uh, I remember the hook a duck sort of thing. And you'll notice the intro is totally different as well. Um, I can't fully remember what happens in it. Um, there's not really any on, any on ride POVs. Like I say, we're just starting out. And people say as well that other, should we say other vloggers back then were sort of the influence. Um, in all honesty, there was no influence at all. Um, it, we, we just started, we just thought, oh, let's go to Southport Pleasureland. It was their opening weekend. We had the weekend, so we went there as a day out and we actually just filmed a vlog on my mobile phone. And, and that turned out to be the first vlog. Um, when I think about analytics, with it being the very first vlog, it actually, for someone that had literally no subscribers at the time, uh, actually did quite well. It got to 100 views in, in, in a few weeks, which realistically is quite good. Uh, it's a, a new channel. Um, and it's currently on 3,000, which is obviously um, middle ground, especially when it was five years ago. Um, but yeah, we're going to take a look and I'm going to have, I'm going to obviously watch it with you. And it, a bit like a reaction from me. I mean, look at that intro. <laughs> it's just so basic, isn't it? Coming up. Of course, Hooker Duck comes into play. Just before I continue, I just wanted to uh, make out about the uh, whole intro thing. Intros uh, is not something I really do much, but I really love doing intros. And you'll see in that sort of uh, intro, it shows you what's coming up. And that's kind of something that I've always lived by. Um, but to pull all the good stuff from a vlog and to put it at the start is quite time consuming. If you know me quite well in a, in a personal sort of value or a, a personal way, you know that I'm a very, very, very busy person. Have the addition of Margot now is obviously add to that. And I've, last summer I did stop doing intros. Um, it's something I enjoyed doing. Obviously that was much basic back then. Right, so today we are at Southport Pleasureland. And we're gonna do some rides here with this little man here. Oh, Look at Theo. <laughs> 
Yeah, look at him. He's ready to go. He's got his lanyard. You get a free lanyard. And we've loaded his card, which is here, with £10. His card's that. reloadable. Today it's Mother's Day and Mum's go free. So Mummy's with us. There she is. <laughs> so she's getting we to don't go around free. Hang on a minute. Too eager. So, <laughs> you excited? <laughs> Are you excited? Yeah. yeah. Take note of what you're about to see here of um, the rides in the background. North Pole Fun, Fun House was there. There it is there. Battle of Blast. And a ride very much like Air Max. That's Frisbee. So let me talk a bit about more information about the park. So we are at Pleasureland today at Southport. <laughs> and the, yeah, there's a lot here behind us. So they're not actually meant to have been open today. They were supposed to open next week, officially. Uh, 6th of April, I believe, they were supposed to be open. But they've opened this weekend for a first look. And with it, like I said before, with it being Mother's Day, Mother's actually ride for free. Uh, I was told as I came in as well that Father's Day is going to be exactly the same. So it's a massive advantage. Uh, for parents to actually enjoy the rides with their kids for free, which is absolutely amazing. Um, like I say, we have come with Theo uh, and my other half, Megan, uh, to endure all that. So they've come on the first ride, which is just behind me there. <laughs> you can see them there on that ride. Uh, rides vary between two tokens and four tokens, just depend on what rides you go on. There's a lot of kids' rides here. Uh, and some bigger rides, which I'll show you shortly. Uh, I gather they'll be uh, four tokens. Each token is a pound, uh, so actually not too expensive. Um, and this park has been here now for some time. It does look like a travelling park, but it's it's far from that. It's quite a fixed park uh, from when Pleasure Land used to be here. Um, so yeah, we're going to show you around the park a little bit and show show you what it's got to offer along with the rides. I'm sure you can notice as well, like I've mentioned, I used my mobile phone during that period and of course, there's quite a few vlogs that I used to use my mobile phone for. Now, of course, as time goes on, we go to more tra tra travelling grounds, as I mentioned there, that's not quite a travelling ground, although some travelling rides do go there. And um, yeah, I filmed with my phone, filmed it on rides as well, there's a few vlogs after this where throughout the summer, where we get, went to uh, Silcox Fairground, I think we went to Luna Park in Scarborough, and I filmed on my phone, and it was really hard, and I, of course, express you shouldn't do that, I still do, but obviously, starting out, notice that yellow hoodie, I still have that hoodie, it certainly does not fit anymore. <laughs> You'll notice I don't go on anything because uh, Megan went for free on these rides. So Megan was on there with him. So you've just been on the submarine ride, haven't you? How was that? <laughs> Look at his face. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. What, what ride do you want to go on there? Copyright here, aren't I? So Theo's decided his next ride is a Helter Skelter. Nothing's <laughs> changed. <laughs> Just while you see, the staff here are actually really, really friendly. When we came into the park, um, they're very warm welcoming. They talk about the tickets, the rides and everything and what's suited for your needs. So the staff here, well, not, I can't speak a bad word about any of them at the minute. As you can see, they're just like proper waving at them up the top there. Um, so that's always a plus when you get stuff like that, especially at theme parks. Plenty of seating do the uh, picnics you can see there. there's a load of seats in everywhere to be fair plenty of shops cafes <laughs> look at them got stuck ages to come down just want to point out just earlier before the helter skelter or the slide bit you'll notice where theo was at the camera and he was just sort of like showing or or, or just when i said that was that ride all right if you noticed our very first logo as such we kind of was actually from pleasureland southport and you can see it in there in fact i'm just gonna put it there there's our first logo that <laughs> it's totally different to now obviously it was just me and theo uh but as you can see that that is actually from southport pleasureland 
Now, something a bit more into Southport Pleasure Land, we, we've, we've visited quite a few times. In fact, there's another vlog uh, a couple of months later after here when we did do Father's Day. The staff are so friendly there, it's unbelievable to, and it's not changed in the five years when we went to do one at the end of last year. The staff are amazing there, seriously. And it was something that was highlighted and it's quite a weird video to watch because it's it's not something it's something I've taken from in the it, it, as we've gone on because I'm I class myself as like the influencer whether people like that name or not. We try and influence people to go. Of course, there's going to be good with bad, bad with good, but it it was kind of like shown in this video that it was like an influence to sort of go on the first look, and it's and I've, and I stood by that and I, I like that. You you wouldn't believe he'd still ride them. He loves he loves canoes, he loves them. There's parts of Pleasureland that haven't changed since uh, it used to be a theme park, and that area is one of them. <laughs> Are you enjoying yourself so far? Yeah. So there is a downside to uh, Mother's Day because. I'm like this one, right? <laughs> so there's no pro no, no uh, advantage to me. You're enjoying yourself though, aren't you? Yeah. Look at yeah, that, that face. That was the best one, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah it just come off, off Dumbo the, the elephant, as you would have just seen. Yeah. Uh, it was quite high, actually. But yeah. We'll see what else. Oh, oh, like I said before, um, the park officially opens next week. So some of the rides, as you can see, are not quite assembled yet. You can just see that one in the background there. Um, so they will be available hopefully for next week. There's a few of them. There's another one just there. A white one. And then another one over there. Parachute. Yeah, I wanted to get you some closer shots of them just so you know what sort of rides are here. Um, we actually quite a few decent rides. Hopefully they'll be able to from next. So he's taking his fancy no, I don't on. Want to see then. <laughs> a bus? I think that's still there though. See you later. Have a nice trip. Here's a wave. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Not the good. He's so funny. So he's just played hooky duck and he's won this. Can you tell everyone what it is? It's going to be very painful at home when he starts shooting this. <laughs> so probably a bad move. The other option was a gun. So I suppose that's quite good as well. Yeah, I do Yeah. You happy with that? From looking at this video last year, I do remember watching this briefly. I think I posted um, a sh very short video on Facebook about how Hook -a Duck came into life with Theo because he absolutely loves Hook -a Duck. And I remember seeing it and I posted that on Facebook, so I do remember that. It's such a highlight from so long ago of um, <laughs> Theo's reaction when he was just so happy he had a little bow and arrow set. I was like, you happy with that? And he's like, yeah. And he just walked off and it was just, it was just one of my favourite moments. Uh, from that vlog and probably from a memory of him being so so young as well and I've just realized as well as I've just because I've paused it on my phone here um the the um the lo the actual uh thumbnail of this video features me and Theo which is which was our, our logo in the end but the way I did thumbnails back then I can't remember um I think I kept changing them I can that current thumbnail it's probably like the third gen of what I did. I think the first one was just a picture of me and Theo at, at Pleasureland. Then I think I changed it to something else and then I changed it to that one. Um, thumbnails are quite an important part of YouTube. They kind of make you want to click or not click. Um, and yeah, they're quite hard to do. And I look back at some of my thumbnails and they're quite good if I'm honest with you. Uh, we've, I think back in 2019, we had quite a few strong vlogs. Um, one of them was Legoland at Windsor. We went there. Um, and the other one was Hull Fair. We went to Hull in 2019. And the funny thing about Hull Fair's thumbnail is every time I do a Hull Fair vlog, 
the thumbnail is very, very, very similar. It'll have the background or an oversight of the, the ground itself with the rides at night, because we always go on opening night. And we use Hull Fair and then usually the year, and it's always white and red. Because white and red's kind of something, and I don't know why I use white and red, because it used to appear in our logo as well, and that's now changed as well. And yeah, like consistency with thumbnails is quite important. I get asked about YouTube uh, now and again, you know, especially when people are starting, what do you suggest? It's quite hard to suggest to someone uh, who wants to start YouTube of how to do something because. When you look at this, this is, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I didn't know anything about thumbnails, tags, or anything like that. And like I say, I wasn't influenced by anyone else. It wasn't until a few months later when there was a couple of other people I used to watch to sort of give an idea of, oh, am I doing it right? Am I not doing it right? But um, yeah, you'll see a lot of people that will obviously say, oh, they've copied someone else. Originality is something that's quite important. And it's something that I'm quite have a bit of pride with. I like to be quite original. Um, there's no other that I think of at the moment that does anything like what we do with Theo. I think more people are sort of popping up and doing sort of similar things. But I like to know that we're quite of the original of that kind of type and uh, and quite happy and proud about that. Here's some rides that you may have seen or not seen in a while. Barrel of Laps, there's a rotor. Yeah, done. I know. Have you enjoyed yourself, little man? Yeah. Yeah. What's your favourite ride? Uh, oh, it is. What's your favourite <laughs> ride? <laughs> okay. Mm. We'll come back to him in a minute. So, um, yeah. I was doing culture. Uh, culture. <laughs> That's an that ducks up. Oh right, okay, the ducks. Your favourite time is the ducks? Yeah, then I got this. Oh yeah, okay. you got that. So, yes, <laughs> the the it's missed. It's missed. It's Um And he sees behind us, it's free entry, so even better. Um, he's had a great time. So about 25 quid, uh, got on about eight rides. About, so, not too bad. so I hope you enjoyed the video. So we'll see you again soon. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, so <laughs> watching that back is, so I do so remember sitting there and talking to him and it was quite hard to sort of get a conversation out of him. <laughs> it still is now, to be fair. Trent. When you ask him how a ride is, he just goes, good. There, he couldn't actually think what his favourite thing, but his favourite time was the ducks, funnily enough. Notice the price in his, it hasn't really changed. We spent about £25 that day. I think we did say it was 11, uh, sorry, about eight rides. Bear in mind that's eight rides and Megan did go free. So, it, you know, the pricing structure hasn't changed uh, with Pleasureland. I think it's still about, I think they're back to wristbands again. Um, so it's about £25 for the day, which for a wristband fare in that kind of case, you might think is expensive, but there's a lot of value there, especially when um, all the rides are there for the summer. From what you'll have seen, not all the rides were there, not all the rides were open. Um, so obviously, I did mention that in there. But at the end there, obviously, you will have noticed Theo was staring at the phone, because we use the phone. So when you use a phone, you obviously use the front screen and you're filming it like this. So what you do is I've got my front screen on my on my GoPro right now, just so I can see how I'm in between. I don't know if you can tell Bailey sat with me here. <laughs> She's been sat here the whole time. Um, yeah, just to sort of get a, um, a scope to make sure that I'm in the angle, I'm not too out of focus. And that's what you used to do, but you tend to look like, like I'm looking at myself now and not look at the camera. And you can see that it used to annoy me and wind me up. So I'm very conscious that I'm always looking at the lens and not at myself, as you can see. I think overall, when I look back at that video and you compare um, the vlogs there and now, they are totally different. The quality's not that bad. And how I presented that was, I, I'll be honest with you, totally winged it. 
eight and a half minutes, I think it was eight, four, eight minutes, 40 seconds. Um, but at the end of the day, you can definitely tell that a vlog on an influence part of, point of view only needs to be as short as that. It's given basically a first look tour to show you what is there, what we, is it worth it, bit of the rides. Now we're totally different and we explore the rides a bit more, especially at new grounds, go on new rides. And the priceless part of it is taking now what is a, now a nine year old, he was four then, on these rides. Um, and there's loads of different things you've got to consider with us. Uh, we're showing you guys what a nine year old thinks or back then a four year old. You're also seeing a reaction from that person which is completely natural. On top of that, and I know a lot of people have said this and this is one of the biggest best things about what we do is people have sort of been helped to sort of overcome a fear of rides like I'll, I'll use booster max as a great example um that people look at the ride at the hoppins at morkham um even when it was at nutsford and they look at that and think wow that that's 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 high and they'll they want to do it but they won't and I know that some people have been influenced to do that. Void's another example, uh, because Theo's done it. They're like, if if a if an eight year old can do Void, so can I. And Theo's first time on Void, I think he was, uh, I think he was actually seven when he did that at Goose, and it, and it kind of opens your eyes a little bit that he's never pushed on a ride. He will let you know from he won't do Ghost Trains. He won't do Star Flyers. Now, I know you might see me sometimes going, go on, do it, do it. But there's never a point where I'll go, you are doing it or force him on a ride. It's totally natural. And um, you, you definitely do see that. But I think the, the, the outcome of what we've done so far is mind-blowing of where we've come. I think on in total, we're on five, I don't know, I need to look at that. I think we're on like four or five million views, which is... Um, which is big, isn't it, really, when you think about it? And I never I never really saw uh, YouTubers... It's not a future. I don't ever look at that to think that's what I'm going to do. Um, oh, 4.2 4 million we've done, which is incredible figures. But I, I, it's not something in the long term. It's just there as an influence. But I think what's been recognised is uh, you guys as one, but also the showmen. Um, we, we're so welcomed by... Everyone in the Northwest, in Yorkshire, uh, North Wales, uh, even down to like the Birmingham, Midlands area uh, when we ventured there last year, and even more so in Scotland. And, it, and it's so overwhelming to realise that when you go to Scotland, like when we do KLM, people are like mesmerised by what you do and how far you've travelled just to go to, um, to just to a fair, fair, fairground. KLM is one of my favourite fairs. Uh, and it's definitely a place that we'll be going this year. Um, but th that's the magic of it. I, I love doing that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's amazing how far we've come in those five years. You, you, it's easy for me to sit here and go, oh, here's for the next five years. But who knows what's going to happen in the next five years. Uh, obviously, uh, a few people are, are obviously keen to see how Margot goes. Um, Again, it's not going to be a pushy thing. I've always said that she'll do her first ride. She's done two rides now. Um, when she's sort of able to walk. She is starting to walk, but not unaided. Um, so, But we've got some places we've got coming up later this year, which will be quite interesting. And next year, we're not going to sort of put Margot into more perspective because that means we go back to sort of them days. We're going to have like a split. Theo's now 1.4. He's able to do practically every ride in the UK now. Um, and you'll get to see that. So we've still got more to offer. And then next year, you'll get to see grounds that you've not seen before, rides you've not seen before. And the little influence from Margot is she'll be 1 slash 2 next year. And she'll be doing these little rides. So that'll be more focused on Facebook, I think, rather than YouTube. Um, Facebook has a massive potential. And uh, that's where a lot of my sharing goes. Uh, I enjoyed doing that, but I hope you enjoyed uh, me waffling on just then. And um, yeah, the, this week is going to be a bit about us uh, and what we do 
to celebrate our five years and I just think it's a massive milestone. Never thought I'd be doing something like this, especially five years later. I know I said to myself, we'll see how it goes. We got to our first 100 subscribers, I think by the summer of 2019. It took just over a year to get to a thousand. Obviously then the whole COVID thing happened. And then we went into Blackpool. We did a lot of Blackpool things. So I would like to try and do little different things this year to bring back everyone's little likes. So make sure you keep a check out on our Facebook page, which is PT Vlogs UK, of course, which you'll see appearing one side or the other. I don't know which side it'll be on. Um, but also make sure you are subscribed to our channel and see all those things coming up soon. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.